Hello everyone, welcome to or back to my channel. My name is Annie and today I'm going to be talking about the worst books that I read in 2023. I had a pretty mid reading year, I'd say. I read a lot of books. I've read 102 books as of today and it's the 26th of December today so I still We'll probably squeeze in a couple more before the end of the year. Read lots of books and disliked several. Um, I could be missing some on this list because I unfortunately did not make a list of books I DNF'd this year. I did remember one and I am including it, um, but now I know for next year to make a list. Um, but yeah, we have some pretty bad books on this list. So I guess let's just get into it. If you hate people hating on things, um, maybe click off. But if you love it, grab a snack and stick around. So the first one, it's gonna be really, this is a really controversial choice. Um, and that is the Mortal Instruments series by Cassandra Clare. Um, I've only read the first three and I DNF'd Clockwork Princess, which is the first Infernal Devices book. Um, side note, I do think I'm going to give the Infernal Devices series another try. I just think maybe the audiobook wasn't working for me. I did listen to all of the books by Cassandra Clare on audio, um, but I think I have more potential to like the Infernal Devices and I just want to try it physically and we'll see if I can get into that. But, okay, City of Bones. If you didn't know, okay, this series, in the first book, it's about this girl named Clary, and she lives with her mother in New York, and one day she's at this, like, under-18 club with her friend Simon, and she sees this mysterious guy, and she kind of, she sees he has a knife, and she kind of follows him, um, to this back room where he fights these other guys that kill him and then the other guys are like wait you can see that guy that just died and she's like yeah and they're like that's weird um and it turns out that she can see um angels and demons and stuff and like vampires and I don't know all sorts of things exist in this world that most people in our world today aren't supposed to notice and Clary can see those things and very soon after this her mom is kidnapped by this evil guy and um it's a very that's a very typical like YA um fantasy setup for kind of the era it was in let me see the first book came out 2007 okay let's back up a bit so Cassandra Clare is a very beloved author and this series is a very beloved series and I think that potentially if I had read this back when a lot of other people read it when I was maybe 12, 13, I probably would have liked it a lot more than I do now. So I recognize that maybe I'm not the reader for this. However, I was really disappointed. For me, I think it's kind of objectively a bit shit and I recognize that also I am a bit picky because I study English lit so I really value like good prose and I'm sure that Cassandra Clare has really grown over the space of her career I think that this was the first novel that she ever got published and she also used to write um fan fiction which leads me to a big reason why I didn't like this book um, or these three books that I read because there is a plot line um, regarding our main character and this guy called Jace where um, they, they kiss and then they find out that they are siblings and then, and then she meets this other guy and they also kiss and she finds out that Jace is not her sibling, but this other guy actually is. Um, which makes it so much worse. Like, it's not just, oh, 
Like it drives me crazy. It's not just that there was incest and that it was like, oh no, it's fine because it's actually not. Like they're not siblings, it's fine. No, Cassandra Clare had to go and make sure that there was actual incest. Incest. And she used to write Ron and Ginny fanfic. So I found that really concerning and um, I just didn't really find myself rooting for the characters. I didn't like Jace, I didn't like Clary, I liked Simon okay. Um, I just honestly I found Clary very annoying and very clueless and especially I'm I'm kind of like this when it comes to any romance. I don't want one of the characters to just be like but he couldn't possibly like me because like I just don't get it and then she goes around for like ages not knowing or seeing like the very obvious signs that a guy is into her because she's just like that oblivious but we know like I don't I don't like that and that was kind of the case with Clary so she just came off a little bit stupid to me um I'm really not holding back um and Jace I just found really arrogant and annoying and um not all that not all that I also didn't think that the prose was very good. Again, I'm sure that she gets a lot better, but for me, it was a little bit like difficult to read. And just because it was so, just not great. And also I think that there was lots of space wasted, at least in the first book, on a very, very silly event. And it, annoyed me to no end basically simon clary's best friend that's had a crush on her forever um that she sometimes has a crush on back because she feels bad for him he goes to this like vampire party with clary and jace and jace's siblings and he gets turned into a rat and then they leave the party and then they're like where's simon and then they have to go back and rescue him and he's a rat and then they have to go get him like un turned out of a rat like unratted un they have to turn him back into a human and it just it actually adds nothing to the main plot line of the story and it takes so long and it's so dumb and i oh it was just so boring it was so boring and i just couldn't do it after book three i was like mm -mm, mm -mm, no more for me i'm good so that was sad because I want to be a fangirl of those series and I am not um I will I will try the infernal devices next year next up another controversial one but one that if you have been watching my channel you know how I feel about this book because I did a dedicated reading vlog for it and that is fourth wing oh god there's so there's so much to say about this and all of it I have said in that video so if you want really in-depth um watch that but uh, the writing I think was objectively bad um it the prose was not prosing um the romance oh let me let me tell you what this is about so fourth wing if you did not know is the most popular book of 2023 I think I can say that with confidence it's like a global sensation um, people that don't read are reading Fourth Wing. And actually, I was at my neurologist's office the other day and she was reading Iron Flame, which is a new book. And she was kind of saying like, she doesn't like Fourth Wing either. And Iron Flame is really bad, which I've heard. And I kind of want to read it just to see, I kind of want to hate read it just to see like the downfall. Cause I think people that really like Fourth Wing can see Iron Flame is like, not it but i don't know i don't think anything could live up to, to the hype of fourth wing anyway getting off of that tangent fourth wing is massively massively popular it has almost a million ratings on goodreads which is insane considering it came out at the beginning of may this past year crazy um anyway it's about this girl named violet violet and she is living at this war college called bagsia bags guy or something and her mom is like the leader of everything there and a famous general and at this college you can do several different things you can be a scribe or 
work in the army or you can become a dragon rider and Violet has wanted to be a scribe her whole life um but her mom at the last minute is like babe you gotta be a dragon rider and Violet doesn't think that this is a possibility she thinks she's gonna die super easily a lot of people do die in the training to be a dragon rider but she has this disability that basically means that her bones pop out of their sockets a lot and she experiences lots of pain and can get injured really easily and she obviously goes into this you know with not a lot of confidence but a fighting spirit and she meets this guy there that is like her enemy because his mom her mom killed his family um so that sucks and he like vows to kill her but then all of a sudden he's like wow you're just so sexy and they start a romance and hijinks ensue and i hated it i hated it so much i think maybe i wouldn't no i think i still would have hated it but i don't think i'd have hated it this much if it wasn't also a disappointment this is again like um the moral instruments where it's not only disappointing it's bad there's lots of things that annoyed me but i'm gonna just choose three to talk about here one is the romance um i think it was very insta lovey and it went from them hating each other to them having wild sex really quickly and then very soon after that to them saying that they were in love and there was no there was no like there was very little witty banter or any like deep chats that are gonna further the relationship or anything like that like where is the chemistry where is it i don't see it really um i mean sure like they have sex and that's whatever and their dragons are also in love and there's this weird thing where their minds are connected to their dragons and since their dragons are in love they can also always communicate to each other mentally and so i guess the dragons could have been peeking in on them during sex anyway uh, that's a weird that's a weird aspect of the book and i just didn't believe the romance i didn't think that i don't know i kind of just laughed when she said that she was in love with him i was like really that was fast and also like what do you know about this man i don't <laughs> ridiculous and all the girlies are like oh my god that's my man no no he shouldn't be like he's he's nothing special the second thing is that her disability was very convenient in the sense of it really bothered her sometimes and then when she needed to do something important it was non-existent and i that's just not how those things work like i have chronic pain chronic migraines i like was so excited to read something with a main character that lives with chronic pain and there it was just kind of dropped whenever she had yeah like something important to do um which is it was kind of infuriating to read about because i'm like you're not presenting this as an actual issue that she has to tackle in some senses like sure sometimes it's hard but when she really needs to like do something it's like mm, she's actually fine like it just doesn't it wasn't really explored in the way i wanted it to be and I just felt like it was a really shallow kind of representation of someone with a disability. Um, and then thirdly, this one's pretty bad. Um, there was no world building. There was none. Um, the college kind of seems to exist in a bubble. Um, couldn't tell you really about the rest of the world. I would assume you're going to hear more about it in the second book. But this book was very romance heavy and not world building heavy and i personally like my romanticy um very even in terms of romance and world building and it really really bothers me when there is little to no world building so if that's something you don't mind maybe you would like this um i know that that really doesn't bother some people but for me i just couldn't stand it um yeah, some things just didn't make sense. Some things, some things were never explained, um, and some things. I don't know. I don't know. 
it was just bad. It was just bad. So that's fourth wing. <laughs> um, hopefully I never have to think about that book again. Unless I read Iron Flame, which I have a hold on up my li for at my library because I just want to just want to see what's happening. Next up, we have a book that was also really disappointing to me. Um, and that is Book of Night by Holly Black. I really loved the Cool Print series and I want to read um, The Stolen Air. I think that's going to be a duology, correct me if I'm wrong, um, which is set in the same world as The Cool, cool Prince. But I just really disliked this book. It made me really sad because I had a signed copy and a hardcover um, if anyone wants to buy it. I'm finding it really hard to remember kind of the intricacies of this book and why I disliked it but just know I really really disliked it um and I'll tell you what I remember about the plot so basically this girl can manipulate um shadows and that's kind of the main magic system in this world um your shadow can be I don't know transformed into a specific shape you want or whatever like rich people get their shadows altered for like it's almost like cosmetic surgery kind of um and if your shadow is lost you're seen as I think like a dangerous person or like something really bad happened to you I think you can also alter a shadow to increase your power and influence you can alter people's feelings with their shadow it can do a lot of things and I thought that that was going to be a really cool aspect of the book but I don't think it was really like done very well I can't remember exactly why I thought that again I wish I knew but I didn't like it and I thought originally that that was a really cool idea so our main character is like a con artist but now she's working at a bar and she's like oh that's just like in the past I would never do that again then she's pulled back into this whole thing um, that I can remember very little about. But what I do remember is how disappointed I was in this book. It didn't, I didn't like any of the characters. And let me just say, like, it's not bad to have unlikable characters. Like, there can be really good characters that are really well written and some of my favorite characters that are like the bad guys. But I mean, what I mean when I say there weren't any good characters is that I didn't feel like I knew any of the characters. I didn't feel like I cared about any of the characters and I didn't um, ultimately care. And I didn't really feel like the characters were real people, if that makes sense. I wanna read a book and feel like the people I'm reading about are fully fleshed human people that I feel like I know how they'd react in a crisis. I know, you know, maybe their favorite thing to eat for lunch and they have layers and I feel like a lot of the characters in this book were very one note and I hate that um so yeah it was just really disappointing okay the next one I have is Yerba Buena by Nina LaCour I read this for Pia La Plaza's Summerland readathon and I had a lot of thoughts um so this book was marketed to me as a love story because on the back of my copy it said um a love story for our time there was very little romance in it which actually i didn't mind because um i i'm not always a big romance person this book is about these two women that meet occasionally and both go through really hard things in their life and form a relationship but really it just kind of explores their lives. So there are two main characters, Sarah and Emily. And one thing I will say is at the beginning, they, you can't really tell which perspective you're reading from because it's dual POV, um, because they have very little to dis differentiate themselves personality wise, which is bizarre because they both go through extremely different kinds of trauma. So you would think that that would make them, you know, a little bit easier to tell apart. Um, but in the end, I could only really tell the characters apart by their name being at the front of the chapter and what they were doing, because often they were in different places. So I just feel like there could have been a bit more nuance to these characters. 
with that being said over time emily got a lot more character development and she was the character that i was more invested in i would say i wasn't like in love with either of the characters but she was the one i was more invested in and i think that's because nina lacour actually based emily's character off of some of her family history so that makes sense that she would kind of invest more time into that character but at the same time why then are you including this other girl's pov when maybe we don't really need to know about her that much there was a lot of intense things that went on this book was full of drama um it was kind of a crazy read it has a really cute cover but it kind of masks, masks this like insane darkness but these really really intense moments and themes were kind of not really explored at, explored at all um which was really weird because they deserved to be explored so it felt just a little bit insensitive or maybe like trauma porn like i don't know what the intention was behind it i don't know if she intended to have like a deep discussion there but there was nothing really to hold on to um that she was saying about these things they kind of just happened to our characters it was like a drive-by shooting and then not really discussed um and some things that you would think would really impact sarah in particular she doesn't seem to struggle with or even try to process as the novel goes on so it's almost like why was that even included in the story if we're not going to continue dealing with it down the line and finally i just felt like the romance between the two of them didn't make sense it is a sapphic love story which i am a fan of but it was insta lovey uh the very first time they meet they hold hands for a second or their hands touch and sarah says something like to us being like oh it just feels like her hand belongs in mine and i'm like how do you know that another book that really oh it's just bad it was almost so bad to the point where like i just don't really care about it and that's the echo wife by sarah gailey um this book had a really interesting premise and I, in my opinion it just dropped the ball on doing anything interesting with that interesting premise and basically it seems like it'd be really cool so this this woman is a scientist and she's been working on cloning people and her husband who's also a scientist used her research to make a clone of our main character and cheated on our main character with this clone that looks exactly like her but acts um a bit more sort of docile and traditionally wifey -y. and i love that synopsis and then um this clone of our main character kills the husband and i mean they're divorced now but she kills him and she's pregnant with his child and she goes to our main character for help and then they create a clone of the husband which is a really cool premise. I was excited, I was down. But unfortunately, it just sucked. Um, the main character I did like for the most part. I, I, I liked her. She was kind of like traditionally unlikable, but I liked her um, and I feel like she was girl bossing in a great way. Um, the clone character, I liked her not as much, but she was fine. And then there's this guy that they work with in this lab and he was all right. I just didn't really like end up caring about them as the story went on because there was, there were no consequences for anything. The husband obviously goes missing for a few days. That's what everyone else thinks, but he's actually dead while they're creating his clone. I think it's actually more like a couple months, like it takes a while. Um, and no one's like too suspicious and no one from you know outside of our main three characters like there are no other characters there's no police officers that come by and are like are you sure he's out of town there's no one in um their social circles that's a little bit suspicious so the stakes feel really low it feels like no one cares that this man has just disappeared the whole book feels like it's set in this little bubble where actually it doesn't really matter if they you know release this clone out into the world and he screws up because it's not like anyone really cares 
anyway so the stakes just felt so low that i i was like why should i care about this book and in the end i didn't last but probably not the worst book i have on this list is masters of death by olive e. blake which i actually dnf'd this i wanted to like and just couldn't um it is about there's a, it's about a lot of stuff. Um, my main issue with this book is that there was too much going on. It was actually almost incomprehensible. Like there was no way to figure out what was happening. Um, so I just got confused and I DNF'd it, I think at like 60 or 70%. Like I was quite a way into it and I couldn't figure out how we had gotten where we were. And I didn't want to start over because I didn't care about the characters that much. So that was kind of that, but it's about primarily this girl that's a vampire and a real estate agent and she wants to sell this house but this guy that died in it is haunting it and he's like not wanting her to sell the house and then there's this guy that's like the adopted son of death and he organizes seances sort of um and meets with his dad and is like what are these people saying from beyond the grave and it's kind of like a bogus business um and she goes to him he, i actually liked him he was fun his name's fox um and she was like can you help me get rid of this guy and then this whole other bunch of things starts happening where there's um angels like gabriel and another one and their characters and there's this game that's really important with like the gods and all these different deities and the game is like kind of the main point of the book but the game itself is incomprehensible don't know how it's played don't know what it involves only know that you have to win um but it's really hard to win and it's just a lot it's a lot um and i got overwhelmed and i didn't finish it and there was potential for it to be maybe a three star for me like i wasn't liking it that much i think the characters were really quirky and kind of fun to read about but not very fleshed out and there wasn't much nuance to them so i think it was setting up to be like a fine read but because there was so much stuff i actually just couldn't finish it and yeah i don't think it's the worst book by any means on this list but i would never recommend it because like there's it feels like there's no point in reading this book um, yeah. So those are my least favorite books of 2023. I hope you liked some books more than I did this year. Um, and I hope that actually you like some of these books because it's nice to like a book and it's fun to be in on the fun of that. Um, but unfortunately I did not. And here's hoping to 2024 being filled with more books that I really enjoy. Although I'm sure I'll read a bunch of books I hate next year too because that's just kind of the way of the world anyway thank you so much for watching I hope you enjoyed this video subscribe if you would like like the video if you liked it and yeah leave me a comment let me know some of your worst books maybe um let's spread some negativity in those comments please and if you are still watching to this point um put the poop emoji Let's leave a little shit emoji for everyone. Um, Cause these books are shit. So anyway, I will see you in my next video very, very soon. Bye. Hi, I'm filming. <laughs> What's up YouTube? <laughs> it's me. It's me, John. The brother. <laughs> I'm filming my worst books of 2023 video. Oh. Tea. Tea. I've just been ranting. Mm. That's, that's, my that's my bro. This can go in the bloopers at the end, right? Mm -hmm. I was like, is this girl talking to herself? <laughs> She's a crazy person. <laughs>